be waiting for you. Preacher, yes, you may come to the poor pit if you desire. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Ain't God good today? Amen. Such a wonderful God. Today we're going to be dealing with financial responsibilities and marriage. Oh, financial responsibilities and what? Marriage. And marriage. So you wondering am I gonna come up and down your street today? If you're married, it's a possibility. Can I get amen? amen. Somebody said, Lord Jesus, prepare my heart to receive a word. Lord Jesus, prepare my heart to receive a word that I don't rebel against it. Ain't God good today? Such a wonderful God. Somebody gonna feel like I'm picking on him. Brother, I ain't picking on you. Somebody on that back door back there now. Amen. Dealing with the subject of financial responsibility and marriage. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 22. In Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 22. I mean, chapter number 13 and verse 22. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 22. Amen. Are we there yet? The Bible reads us this. Amen. The Bible says it like this. The Bible puts it like this. It says, A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the wicked is laid up for who? The unjust. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for who? The just folk. Amen? A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. But look, I'm here to talk today about finances and marital responsibilities because a lot of times we get this mentality that Jesus is going to fix every single thing. I hope nobody here now have someone that passed away. And you got a vote for me account. You got a pastor and a first lady that do life in church. In church. It's a crying shame. Don't be so caught up in the Lord that you don't manage your responsibilities. Okay, here we go again. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children, true. My mama, oh, I love you, Ella Jones. Thank God. She taught me a lot when I was a child. She taught me, Barry, never make a baby that you can't take care of. What? She taught me, she said, as a little child, as a little boy, she said, Barry, never make a baby that you can't take care of. So, when you become doing grown up stuff, hallelujah. When you start doing grown up stuff, you got to man it up, you got to woman it up, and handle your responsibilities. Oh, Jesus, I don't need that amen yeah. lights. Can I, can, I, can I get a brother to say amen? amen. You want a playhouse? You got a playhouse. Oh, Woo, did I? You gotta pay house. You gotta pay. Amen. Yes, Lord. Somebody say, ain't nobody ever taught me this. I'm teaching you right now. If your mother didn't do you, if your daddy didn't do right by you, if your son, if your former pastor didn't do right by you, I'm teaching you right now. If you want a pay house, you gotta pay house. Amen. So you gotta take the responsibility. Of being that provider as a man. A good man. Nobody said a smart man. Nobody said a sophisticated man. Nobody said a gifted man. But a good man. A good man knows how to handle his responsibility. <laughs> Y'all believe that? Amen. Somebody don't believe that. Somebody don't believe a good man know how to handle their business. Amen. Believe it, believe it, beloved. Amen. 
Let's go to the Word of God. Let's go look at Father. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 31. Oh, Lord, I'm so glad Pastor John dealing with this virgin woman, Lord Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going now. I'm sure I'm going now. Let me explain something to you. Even though a man has a responsibility to be a provider, sisters, you have some responsibilities too. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. Now the Bible says, amen, verse 10, who can find a virtuous woman? Preach pastor, come on brother, see. For her price is four book rubies. Oh Lord. The heart of a husband does safely trust in her so that he have no need of spoil. Amen. See, I can preach this because I got me a virtuous woman. I can preach this late, late Jane. I found me one. I found me one. I'm, I, I've been hooked up, tired of taking with it almost 20 years. I got me one. So I found me a virtuous woman, so I'm going to go ahead and go to work out. For a price is for above rubies. The heart of a husband does safely trust in her so that he have no need to spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. A virtuous woman, you ain't got to go pull up out the club. Y'all don't hit me. <laughs> a virtuous woman, you ain't got to drag out of the casino. She going to do him good all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> she see the she see a wool and flag and work it willingly with her what? She's not an idle woman. A virtuous woman is not an idle woman. See, somehow in church we got this mindset that the man's supposed to be the sole provider. And he should. But that don't mean you sit at home and watch so far. <laughs> oh, y'all don't hear me now. Don't hear me now. Don't hear me now. Don't, I'm not, don't, don't, don't stone me yet. Them sisters saying like, amen, pastor, but some of them like, wait a minute. <laughs> so you don't sit at home and watch as the world turns. Oh. Pastor, we don't do that. Do that even come on in more days of, the, days of your life? I, I don't even know if they even come on. When I was a child, it was coming on. The young and the rest should be old by now. They should be old and great. Are they still on? Lord, have mercy. They was on when I was a child and young and the rest. They should be old and great by now. They should be my age by now. Let's go to the word of God. But see, we're dealing with that subject of a virtuous woman, right? She will do him good. She sent wool and flat and work it willingly with her hand. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She rises up also while it is what yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maids. She considered the field and what? And buy it then. With the fruit of her hands, she planted a vineyard. This is a working woman. This is a working woman. Now I do admit when Mama Jake got, when we got married, Mama Jake, I asked you to come off the job. Mama, when I met, met elect Lady Jones, she was one of the hardest working ladies I could think of. Working double shift. I called her, tried to talk with her, and she was sleeping because she didn't work the door. And then I'm going to roll, I'm going to do a drive by that apartment and see, make sure she's home. I ain't tell her that, but I showed her all by a couple of times. I said, What's wrong with this woman? She ain't asking my phone before we got married. And I rolled by that. Uh huh, that called her, so she must be. She must be sleeping here. No. And then I, then when she called me, she said, I was working the double. I, I worked the double last night and I and I and I, I was sleeping. I said, Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Had to check on my investment before I put a ring on it. When I call you, I want you to answer. Amen? Yes, Lord. <laughs> she know that. That's why I embarrass her. She know I dust the drive by. She don't dust the drive by. She done it more than one time. Anyway, let's go back to the word of God. Okay. She rises, okay. She considered the field and buy it. With the fruit of her hand, she planted a vineyard. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. She carried her loins with what spent and strengthened her arms. She perceived that her what merchandise is good. Her cattle go not at night. Go, go not out at night. 
She lays her hand to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. The distaff. She strengthens, she stretches out her hand to the poor. Yet she reaches forth her hand to the needy. She's a giver. She's a giver. A virtuous woman is not always a receiver. A virtuous woman is a distribution center. She gives. Amen. That's the truth now. Amen. All right. She is not afraid of the snow for her hands, for her household. For all her household are clothed with what? Scarlet. She maketh herself covering of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. What is that talking about? When you marry the right woman, they happen to be an addition to your backbone. They are not your backbone, but they are an addition to your backbone. As a matter of fact, if you got a virtuous woman, wife, many men would like to have your wife. Yeah. You know that? Remember that song? That which got older you is brand new to somebody else? You better hold with what you got. Both be a gospel song. It sounds like one of uh, holding the wall song. <laughs> Cause that would become old to you is brand new to somebody else. I think it, I hope it was a gospel. I heard that song. It might have been at work. It might be one of them holding the wall. God forgive me. They be playing a little bit of everything at work. You gotta watch that jump. But anyway, but see, she has got the ability to help you fulfill your dream. A virtuous woman will help you set some goals and accomplish them. You don't want to get with this woman that don't want you to go nowhere. You want somebody that wants you going places and going to help you get there. A virtuous woman will help you get there. She makes it fine linen and sell it there. What? She's an entrepreneur. And delivered girls unto the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opened her mouth with what? With wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. She's not a rough woman. She's not a rough woman. She's a kind woman. She's a sweet woman. She's a soft woman. She's a delicate woman. Okay, it said, she looking well, amen, to the ways of her household, and eat not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. What? Pastor, you ain't got no business praising your wife. If you don't honor your wife, that praise talking about honor your wife. Who gonna do? If you don't tell her that she look good, sleep with it might just say, hey, you look so sort of nice. You're supposed to give a compliment. You're supposed to praise her. You're supposed to. Don't get so common with your wife that you stop opening the door for her. And stop courting her after children. Get in trouble. Take your wife out sometime. Wine and down your wife. The same thing it took to get her is going to take to keep the fire going. Yeah. When the last time you took your wife out to eat? Well, we were sitting out to eat last night, Pastor, and I ain't talking to you. <laughs> and I'm not talking to you. You gotta keep on winding it down. You gotta keep on praising her. She needs to know that she looks beautiful, even though you see and you get so. See, we get as men, we become desensitized to it. Mm -hmm. Have you ever, have you ever noticed? Shame on you, man. Okay. Mama Jimmy looking so good. Sometimes I tell her she looks nice, and then somebody, you know, see, God is shame. You get to church. Mama Jimmy, you look so nice. I said, Lord, I should have been the first one that said that myself. <laughs> Why she needs somebody else to say it? 
supposed to be the one to say first? Amen. Then y'all sisters, brother, don't, brother, I, she might have 12 children, but you start talking a little too much, I'll be like, wait. <laughs> Lord help her. Okay, here we go. Amen. Many daughters have done virtuously, but they have cheated them all. Favor is deceitful. And beauty is vain. But a woman that feared the Lord, she shall be praised. What? She shall be what? Praised. See, some brothers think that it's a sin to praise their wife, to give compliments, to encourage them, to tell them how good they look, to give them accolades. If you don't, my brother, who's going to do it? All right, then. All right. You think ain't nobody interested in your wife. Don't be trying to body slam someone when you go out there in the mall and then somebody say, oh, you look nice. I ain't seen you all the time. Then you look twisted. <laughs> look like you about to eat, eat your shirt. <laughs> look about, look like you about to power slam somebody. <laughs> it's you. You don't want that the problem. It ain't them. Yes, Lord. The Bible says favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Oh, man. I, 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 God just happened to bless me with a beautiful woman, beautiful wife, and I appreciate that. But guess what? Beauty is only skin deep. You don't get me. You don't understand. Beauty is only skin deep. If you have to miss Prince died. If you ask after Miss America, if you after that, you gonna mess yourself up with God. You gonna mess yourself up with God. You gonna miss what God has for you. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her. Here we go again. Praise her in the gates. Oh, well, I, 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 I'm gonna hit that because some brothers in here. That's a man in here and telling the wife how much you appreciate. I know it and the Holy Ghost knows it because I won't be I won't be harping on it. Somebody ain't doing it. Somebody ain't telling the wife how well you look, how nice you look. You're not giving her the honor that is due her. And the Holy Ghost just not beeped it out. Lord, have mercy. Let's go back to the word of God. Even long past, don't you pick it now? Uh-huh, I'm picking now, I'm showing sure them. Because the Holy Ghost knows everything. Ecclesiastes chapter number four. Let's turn that real quick. Dealing with financial responsibilities of marriage. So it does not hurt for the woman to help the man out. It does not hurt for the woman to help the man out. Amen. Why y'all looking at me like that? Mama J, you know you got insurance. Like, ain't you a doula? Ain't you a notary? Ain't you? <laughs> She doing shirts on the side and all that stuff. My Lord. Do a little bit of this and do a little bit of that. It don't hurt to help your husband out. This sound blasphemies on it. Because y'all ain't no, I, I thought you I thought you gave mama gave everything on a silver platter. I try my best to. But what I don't do for herself, she'll go get it herself. Mama J ain't broke. That she ain't broke. Sometimes I gotta go to hustle some change. Still the check hit. I'm gonna tell it. She looking at me, don't tell all that. I'm gonna tell it. I'm sure I'm gonna tell it. I looked at my bank account one day and I said, Woo, Lord, I feel blessed. I'm blessed, blessed, blessed. And the bank account the next day says, Wait, 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 wait. wait. What happened here? I know we ain't have that many bills. <laughs> Mama J, you got some explaining to do. So what she done, she put some back for a rainy day. She took a little bit and put it back. She always has been doing that since we've been married. So when the hard time comes, we got something to fall back on. A virtuous woman ain't gonna let you spend everything. A virtuous woman ain't gonna let you spend everything. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. 
Please add chapter number four, verse number nine to three. She gonna say, "Baby, hold it, wait, 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 wait. wait. You gotta slow down. Spinning way too much." Amen. Amen. Yes, God. Ecclesiastes chapter number four, verse number nine, dealing with financial responsibility and marriage. So, if your husband is struggling, sister, and you have the mentality, you have the gift, you have the talent, and you can help her, help him out, help him out. Yes, Lord, help him out. And don't look at me like that, because all these jobs out there, you ain't got to go nowhere. Some of them jobs can sit right in your home and earn money. They have the internet, you can do things online, you can do stuff online, and you sit right back in the comfort of your home, passing a bottle over here, passing a, fixing a, uh, a lunch right there, and still pushing the buttons on the computer, and still getting the job done. Don't look at me like that. The pandemic has been a blessing for us. As a matter of fact, a lot of life insurance policies now that I have to write up, I don't even have to go there. I can zoom over here and I can zoom over there. They made it easy for me, pray Lord. I don't have to go and be in your face. So I can make money right in the privacy of my home. Zooming you. Yes, God. Let's go to the word of God. Please ask chapter 4, verse number 9, 12. Financial responsibilities. <sighs> yes, Lord. Two are better than one because they have a reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But won't you to him that is alone when he followed. For he had no, not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, they have, they should have, they have heat. But how can one keep, keep what? Warm alone. And if one prevail against him, two shall what? Withstand him. And a threefold cord is not what? Easily broken. When you're working together with your spouse, by your responsibility, Y'all have a reward of your labor. Amen. Did you not know? Don't we have a we have two accounts, three accounts. My name is on it. Mama J name is on it. Amen. On the accounts. Amen. See, ain't nothing in private. Amen. Amen. She know my business. I know her business. You need to know your wife's business. You need to know your husband's business. Yes, Lord. And you need to work together yeah. to get the job done. Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Can we get an amen that's going over like it? Some of you women like, I ain't working, I ain't doing nothing. You don't have to. <laughs> Baby, you don't have Let me tell you something. When a woman decides to sit at home and don't do nothing except, hey, baby, go get it. It's, you know, ain't nothing wrong with that. If he's able to do that. That's right. If the brother is able to do that. The way I was raised up, my mom taught me, and how she taught me was to be a go-getter. So I'm going to go get it. If one job wouldn't do, get what? You better, you better get to. That's the way it is. Every man don't have that in them. Some men are disabled. They can't do it. What happened when your back go bad? Uh, leave alone. <laughs> what happened when you become disabled? Sisters, I'm talking to somebody now. You better go back and get you some education. You better go back and get you some training. You better do something if something happened to that man. I'm telling you what God love. We don't do enough teaching like this in church. You need, a, you need a talent, you need a gift, you need to be able to do something. If something happened to your husband. This is life. Then when Proverbs 13 and verse 22, a good man leaves an inheritance to a true to true. Me and Mama Jack can't tell all of my business. 
But me and Mama J got it set up that if something happened to me and her, the children would be well taken care of. The children would be well taken care of. It's supposed to be like that. People jumping and shouting all over the church ain't got no life in church. If mama didn't leave you nothing, if daddy didn't leave you nothing, you need to build an immediate estate to leave somebody if you die. Amen. The pin drop. Because y'all got it together now. Amen. See, that's what people, you go to church, baby, they'll jump and shout all over the church. And you ask them about one preacher, one, 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 one. I, I, more than one preacher told me, Jesus, my life in church. Yeah. Excuse me? It ain't in my Bible. Jesus, your life in church, Pastor. That's one of the craziest things I've ever heard in my life. Jesus is your life in church. You take Jesus down this small. You take, you take Jesus over to serenity. See what they're going to do for you. Go take him over there. And I'm not trying to be facetious. But we got to get out of this mindset when God has told us what we need to do. We need to be about doing it. Got to leave something. If mama or daddy didn't leave you nothing, it is your responsibility to leave your children something. Yeah. And I'm in the book, baby. Yeah. Brother told me Jesus mind church, but I said, nah, see you. Wouldn't want to be your wife <laughs> and children. Luke chapter 6 and verse 38, dealing with spiritual responsibility. Spiritual responsibility. Amen. Financial responsibility and marriage. Somebody tell me, oh, and read it. Lady Jones, read anybody. Anybody got it. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Please read. Give and it shall be given to you. Good measure. Yes. Press down. Shake it together. Run it over. Shall men give unto your bosom. Amen. God set yourself up to be a giver. Amen. See, if you want God to bless you, you've got to give. Who said that? Who, who said that? Give and it shall be given you good measure, press down. Ain't that red letters? Yeah. Yeah. So that's Jesus talking to you. Amen. That's Jesus talking to me too. Amen. If you want to get, Lord have mercy, you gotta give. Amen. Gotta give. If you want love, you got to give love. If you want understanding, you got to give understanding. Give, and it shall be given you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. First Timothy chapter number 5, verse number 8 through 14. Let's go there real quick. You know, see, this ain't one of them shout messages. This is about marriage. About financial responsibility and marriage. Did you not know if you're working together with your husband, God can bless y'all tremendously? Like I said, Ecclesiastes. Two working together has a reward of their labor. Can I get an amen? Amen. They have a reward. Me and Mama Jay work together pretty good. Amen. amen. Our work she spent. No, she <laughs> no. Yes. no, our work she managed. She managed. She managed. Did you not understand? We, we managed. And God has blessed us. 
I'm not broke, but I'm not rich. And my God has produced multiple streams of income for me. Amen. Even though I'm a pastor, I don't live off the offering. And I'm not down in no pastor that lives off the offering. I'm not down. There's times when men of God has got to live off the offering. They have to. So I'm not down in them. But when it comes to me, God has set me up by the grace and only by the grace and mercy of God. I'm not bragging. It's the mercy of God. Amen. The grace of God. That we do anything. That I'm not sitting back and begging you for nothing. Amen. And some people got the best child. I don't know what Mama J going to do with all them children. <laughs> you keep on worrying about Mama J, you're going to miss it. Because if something happened to Pastor J, Mama J going to be all right. And all them children too. Amen. I told you my mama taught me don't ever make a baby that you can't take care of. Amen. Don't ever. She drilled that into my head as a young child. Right. As a young boy growing up. The school age child. I ain't going to say young boy. It was more like a school age child. Teenager. She drilled that into my head. Barry, don't be out here like these other men making babies and don't take care of them. You make sure that when you make babies, you take care of the babies. Yes, it is not the church responsibility to take care of my wife. It is not the church responsibility to take care of my baby. If something happened to me, I'm supposed to put that in order. Yes, Lord. People looking at her, I don't know how she's going to make it. Man, you need to stop worrying about Mama J. Mama J going to be all right. Lord willing, she's going to be okay. Yes, God. Let's go to the Word. Luke chapter number 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8 through 14. We've been working together since we got there, scribing, paying off cars, paying off houses, Working together. Not blowing income tax money. Not blowing income tax money. Can I get amen? Amen. Amen? amen. Let's go to the word of God. First Timothy chapter number five. Let's cheer up a little bit. Amen. You ain't got to be all what? Chapter five. Verse number eight. Go ahead and read it later, later John. But if any provide not for his own. Ooh, I don't know if we can chill that much from now. Read it again. But if any man provide not for his own, uh -huh. and especially for those of his own house, he have denied the faith, and it's worse than an infidel. The Bible talks about us as men so bad if we don't provide for all. Women of God, don't call your husband an infidel. <laughs> I know you might think it, but don't say it. Don't say it. Ain't nothing, my wife ain't never called me in for this. Because the one job didn't do, I went out and got to. But if you as a man make babies and don't take care of the babies, and you call yourself a Christian, you deny the faith. And you are worse according to my Bible, not according to my judgment. This is the Bible. You're worse than him. If you don't handle your business, you're worse than him. You're worse than him. That's why I tell the sisters here, if a brother want to leave you and want to go out and get a divorce, make sure he don't have then we begin with another one, make sure he don't enjoy nothing. <laughs> you take every you take him for every cent he got. Make him so poor he can't pay attention. <laughs> Brother tried to look at something, he just can't. If you look at another one, say, Lord, I just can't. It's cheaper to keep it, ain't this what the world says? It's cheaper to keep it. And don't you ever come to me and say, Pastor, uh, yeah, 
So the brother being divorced, and um, she asked me for child support. Yeah. Brother, you better get you a second job to pay. Yeah. Do you see me smiling? I take taking care of your child responsibility. Yeah. Very serious. Yeah. Very serious. And there is no mercy from Pastor Jones. Barry, Delvin, Zachary, don't you ever come to me and say, I don't want to pay. If you play, you better pay. Yeah. Can I get an amen? Amen. Right. Nathan, be one. Stop. <laughs> Keep reading, please. But if any man provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, mm -hmm. he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. And is worse than infidel. Keep reading, please. Let not a widow be taken into the number under three score years old. Uh huh. Having been the wife of one man, yes. Well reported of for good works. Mm -hmm. If she have brought up children, yes. If she have lost strangers, yes. If she have washed the sack feet, uh huh. If she have relit. Re relieve the, the afflicted mm -hmm. if she have diligently followed every good work but the younger widows refuse he read, please. but when they have begun to wax wanting against Christ what they, gonna do? they will marry they will marry he read. having damnation because they have cast off their first faith yes and whither they learn to be idle come on now Wandering about from house to house, mm -hmm. and not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. Sometimes it happens. Go ahead, read. I will. Therefore, why y'all looking at me like that? Sometimes it happens. It's just people. Go ahead, read. I will that the younger women marry. Go ahead, read. Marry, bear children. Guide the house. Wait a minute. They are supposed to do what? Marry, bear children, guide the house. They are supposed to do what? Marry, bear children, guide the house. They are supposed to do what? Marry, bear children, guide the house. So if a woman, Zachary, if you get married to a lady, Barry, you get married to a woman, and she said, I love you, Barry. I love you, Zachary. I love you, Delvin. <laughs> But I'm having children now, and I just can't go out there to work no more. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> she has the right to say I quit, and I'm going to guide the household. That is biblical. Amen. Yeah. Read it again. Cause... I will, therefore, that the younger mar women marry. Bear. He didn't say younger widows. He said younger women. Poor women, women of God, bad children, married, got the household. Right. They have that option if they want to choose that option. They can work or they can stay home. They could be a Proverbs 31 law, or they could be the woman to sit home and cook and clean and raise the children. This is, I told y'all, some people think hey, this is blasphemous. <laughs> if your wife want to sit down and don't do nothing except have babies and stay at home and guide the household and wash clothes and cook and clean and manage the finances that come to her hand, she's in God's will. Amen. But if she want to go get it, go work and get it, she's also still in God's will. What? This is Bible. Keep reading, please. I will, therefore, that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. See, the reason why I believe he wanted young women to marry and guide the household, because you got to understand, when you're raising children, Serena is a prime example. I've seen that. It takes time for a child to bond with the mom. 
and it takes time for a child to be weaned. If you had a child in March and you back to work in May, you haven't given yourself time to wean the child. Are y'all looking at me like I'm crazy? Ain't this the Bible? I would that the young men and women marry and guide the household. They gotta raise them children. They gotta wean them children. They gotta teach them children. They gotta instruct them children. It takes time to do that. It takes time to do that. If they don't do that, if they don't have time to do that, there's gonna be some deficits in your household. Amen. Keep reading. Finish that scripture. Then we'll be down with that. Read it again. No, read that last scripture. Then we down. For some are already turned aside after Satan. See, in other words, this is spiritual counsel and advice for women, and younger women in the body of Christ. Yeah. Marry, have children, guide the household. That's right. But she can also be a proper 31 woman. That she can help out and do things and do things productively to help financially. You actually can actually do both. You can actually multitask. It it's actually possible. It is. But if she chooses not to multitask and just focus on raising the children right. and guiding the household, She's also biblically correct. Yeah. All right. Second Timothy, I'm going to correct this chapter number nine, verse one and two. I think we just did Amen. Thank you. Second, uh, second uh, Corinthians chapter nine, verse one to ten. Thank you, sir. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse one to ten. For as touching the ministering to the saints. Uh huh. It is superfluous for me to write to you. Yes. For I know the forwardness of your mind. Forwardness of your mind. Uh huh. For which I boast of you to them of Macedonia. Yes. And Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal have provoked very many. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf. Yes. That as I said, you may be ready. Lest happily, if they of Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared, uh -huh. we, that we say not ye, should be ashamed in this same company boasting. Uh huh. Go ahead and finish it up. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exalt the brethren that they would go before it unto you and make up beforehand your bounty. Yes. Whereof ye have noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as covetousness. Uh huh. Keep reading. But this I say, mm -hmm. he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. So when it's coming to spiritual responsibility, if you give a little, you get a little. A little. If you give a little, you get a little. If you give a lot, you're going to be blessed upon it. Read that last verse one more time. But I say, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Okay, God has blessed you financially, and you're gonna come tip God with a with a one dollar bill. Hey, I'm not down nobody's only got one dollar. If God that's all you got, give it. I ain't paying that no attention. But I want to say if God has blessed you abundantly, abundantly, and you're gonna come tip God. And you're gonna mismanage the money that God gave you. I'm talking somebody ain't paying their tithes, but you want all the blessings. You want all the blessings of God, but you don't want to give. You deceive it. You're gonna stay broke, busted, and disgusted. You're gonna stay broke. You're gonna struggle for many years to come if you don't do right by God. I said it's right by Pastor John. I said, pipe by God. I mean, my Lord, you lose more than you get trying to hold on to it. Well, God will open up, open up the windows of heaven, pour me out a blessing, but you ain't giving it. Come on. That's, that's, that's madness. The way the kingdom of God works, spiritual financial responsibility, is that you give. And when you give, God gives to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, do God give it to your bosom. 
If when I pay tithes and offering, the only thing God do is keep me from dying. Ain't that enough? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Kept me from dying. Kept me from dying. Lord, that's enough. Yeah. He kept my help. Kept me on six feet above ground. That's enough. Amen. Amen. Did we read all the way through verse 10? No. Go ahead, finish it up, please. But I say, but this I say, he was so it sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he was so it bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly. Not grudgingly. Or of necessity. It's so interesting to see God bless us with so much and we're going to try to put a limit on God. Y'all, I'm not after y'all money. I want to see some people really blessed. But see, that's principles of how, be, how to be blessed. Yeah. And one of the main principles is that you give. And, and see, you don't give with expectation of getting, just give to get back. But Malachi chapter 3 says, See one eye, open up the windows of heaven and pull you out of blessing. When you give one to God, look for witty inventions, look for ideas, look for things for him, opportunities for you to do things. Me and Mama J was just joking. She said she was joking, so I'm going to apply for door dash. She went and applied for door dash. You ain't dashing nowhere. She ain't dashing nowhere except home and wherever she got to go, but she ain't dashing no from door to door. The devil is a lie. She said she wanted to just see what she could do, plow for DoorDash. That's the means of income she wanted. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So it's called, did you mention to our, our idea about being a jester and all that? You know, mention that people could be, see, there's ways to think out of the box and make money. Yeah. But when you give, you got to say, Lord, open up my eyes that I may see the windows of heaven open up for me. If you ain't looking for it, it's hard to see when you ain't looking for it. But when I kill, I look for opportunities that come from God to prosper. Amen. I like to see people go and business for themselves. And if you want to do it on the poor side, I'm going to keep a regular nine to five job, keep it. And do something on the side. These are means and ways of prospering your hands. God wants you to have multiple avenues of blessing. Amen. My job is not my own means of blessing. That's right. And I appreciate my job. It pays me pretty good. Mm -hmm. But it is not my only means of blessing. Amen. And it shouldn't be your only means neither. Amen. 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 Last year. Did you finish up verse 10? Go ahead and finish up. Not gradually or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Okay, here we go. Stop right there. Not grudgingly or of necessity. What is necessity? You know, God understands you got to eat. You need to eat. Give us our daily bread. Amen. 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 But it don't mean eat out of your day. That's right. If you're eating out every day and ain't paying your tithes and offering, you're eating your sleep. If you're eating out every day and you don't have money to pay your tithes and offering, you're eating the seed that God gave you. Okay, let me explain something. If you spend $25 a day eating, $25 a day times 10 is $250. Times two weeks, times twenty, times three, which is thirty days in a, every month approximately. You spend seven hundred fifty dollars on fast food. Okay, let's drop it back a little bit. Maybe you don't spend twenty five dollars a day. Maybe you only spend twenty. Twenty times ten is two hundred. Two hundred times two hundred times three of every ten days is six hundred dollars on eating out. That's a nice car note, y'all. And you're wondering why you ain't got no money to give it to the offering. Oh, come on, look at me. I'm going to teach y'all the right way. Hang on. We ain't going to be jumping and shouting and ain't talking about something like this. Amen. 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 Amen.
I'm going to see y'all blessed. And if you eat your seed, you ain't got nothing to kill. <laughs> All right, we don't like that. I know nobody that doing that. Amen. Please read. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always have an all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he that dispersed abroad, he have given to the poor, his righteousness remain forever. Now he that ministered seed to the sore, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Amen. I want y'all, I got a little homework for y'all, I got one more scripture to be close. If you work and you eat out every day, let's go account of how much money you spend. Over the course of a week, over the course of a month, it adds up. It could be a car note that you're paying right there. Fast food. I'm telling y'all what God love. I'm picking now. Last scripture, Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 28. Ephesians chapter 4. We're done. Are we there yet? We're done. I want to go. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Please read. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the things which is good, that he may have to give to him that need it. Some of these folks, can I be real, some of us, you know, got some stuff we ain't got no business doing. I ain't got to talk all about it. You know what we used to do before we got saved. Amen, Lord. You know what we used to do. We know what we used to do too. We don't do it no more. Amen. Amen. We work with our own hands. Amen. Amen. So that we'll have to give to somebody that needs. Yeah. It is more blessed to be a giver than a receiver. Did you finish this scripture? Oh, I'll hear about my eyes. God, we thank you today for your word. We ask that you touch the people today. Anyone need prayer, please come to prayer. Ministers, please come and pray for them.